SpongeBob SquarePants looks like when comedian Tom Kenny pops by live. And then Matt Myra gets his mitts on the ultra-fast HTC One X smartphone in Gadget Plan. Plus, we take a trip into outer space to find life within Galactopedia. Also, Trekkers rejoice! The Enterprise is being built, and I'll have the details in the feed. And clear out your closet to make room for these awesome Marvel polos in threads. Saddle up, partners! AOTS starts now! Woo! Yeehaw! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Attack of the Show. Uh, yeah, welcome. Why, why so low energy? I'm Candace Bailey. We are coming to you live. If I expend any more energy than that throughout this entire show, I will be exhausted for Diablo's midnight release. You? So I'm in full conservation mode. You're gonna have I'm to not, suck it up nope. and give me some energy I'm not, today. This is all you get. I am only gonna emote this much. I'm staying in my zone. I'm taking it easy. I've waited 10 years for this damn game to arrive and it's happening at midnight Diablo 3. Oh, ah, ah. Diablo 3. Oh, look at it. Look at it. Oh my God, why am I here? I should be at home trying to log in and then be mad. I cannot wait. I bought a new gaming PC just for this game. And, I bet you did. And I didn't really need it. I just wanted the physics all the way up because when I hit a barrel, I want it to go flying. Oh. So as soon as you get home, you're, you're playing. I can't. I have to wait till midnight. Oh. Uh, midnight Pacific oh. to get on in there. But yeah. I've been waiting. I was getting my gaming rig all set up this weekend and realizing why I hate Windows all over again. It was like, <laughs> uh, hey, abusive boyfriend. I'm back. Drivers. Oh, all right. I'll fix that. So you won't be sleeping at all tonight? No, not at all. No Plus, sleep. I have a sick dog and a sick girlfriend at home. Aww. And they've been waking me up like the dog will sneeze and the girlfriend will sneeze. It's just, just a bunch of sick animals all over my house. Aww. That's all it is. Oh, yeah, it's tragic. That's Speaking my life. That's the train wreck that is my reality. But <laughs> El Diablo is going to take me away from yeah. it all. Yeah. Speaking of dogs. Yeah. I uh, tweeted out a picture yesterday. I was at a pool party and I tweeted out this picture of me and a dog. And Whoa, I got all these responses. <laughs> Everyone thought I was naked. <laughs> 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 I would like to tell you, I am not naked. I had a bathing okay. suit on under that. So there you go. I thought it looks like that looks like a PETA ad. Like it looks it like you're, you're going that route already. Already. Well played. Um, well, good. I'm glad you were you were clothed. It's I was better clothed. for you and, <laughs> and Twitter the and the dog. Everybody is better that. But now. We look into the abyss, and the abyss also looks into us. It's Nietzsche, guys. Just open a damn book, okay? <laughs> We're going around the net. Let's do it! Yes! For Diablo! There's the energy I want. Thank you, Kevin. We're gonna talk about a triathlon. You ready? Sure. It involves swimming, yeah. biking, uh -huh. and running. You, you forgot about flying. Oh. Joey! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so what happens at the end of a triathlon? Usually your nipples bleed through your shirt and then they shoot you. It's oh. typically what happens. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so painful. Yeah. Remind me to never be in a triathlon. I will. Okay, thank you. Look, I know you may think you care about lingerie football. You don't. Mm. You don't. At least you don't care about it nearly as much as this guy does. Oh, that one sails out of bounds. What kind of It's a all-star game! Awesome because uh, uh, there's a bunch of ladies on the field arguing, and then the ladies have to go and break the ladies apart. It's like the best thing ever. But the funniest part is that they treat lingerie football 
like an actual sport. <laughs> like, really? Come on, guys. I don't even know how we found this video to begin with. Ah, Google alerts. <laughs> I got them right. set up. No, sir, I got my keywords are lingerie, women, contact sports, profanity, body armor, and penalties. <laughs> Look, it's kind of specific. It doesn't always deliver, but when it does, it's, it's good. good. Yeah, yeah, as you saw. <laughs> good. All right, and this next video, douchebaggery meets dune buggery. And it serves as a delightful example of people getting what they deserve. Set to the upbeat tune, Girl Can Help It, by the new Bomb Turks. <laughs> Welcome to the Masters of Dirt in Grand. <laughs> Extreme insurance claim ever. That's, that's the follow-up. Followed by extreme bankruptcy. Yes, and then likely an extreme day job at a Cinnabon <laughs> or Red Robin or oh, yeah, I take love your pick. Cinnabon. Of course you do. Yum. Wouldn't y'all all do. like a Cinnabon right now? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. No. Okay. <laughs> and now we present a video of a girl drinking a beer. Mm, it is pure poetry. <laughs> I'm gonna sit here and record you until you drop, because it's only a matter of time. Go. Okay. <laughs> 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 you asked me if you should have been drinking a light beer. <laughs> Diablo 3. And today, we are celebrating Kevin's tenure on Attack with another classic. Uh, this one aired way back on June 15th, 2005. Here is one of my many attempts to parlay my TV gig into an addicting brand of sugary cereals for the kids. Kids, come get your breakfast. Yay, breakfast! Woo! Oranges. Oranges? Mom! Oranges are bull****. I want something sweeter. Yeah. I want something newer. Yeah. I want something purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Too bad all we have are these oranges. Yeah. Hey, kids. Sounds like you're looking for a better breakfast. Sounds like you're looking for Franken Prairie. Franken Prairie is the awesomest cereal ever. In fact, it exceeds your recommended daily allowance of awesome by 600%. I love the fun colors. Dull brown cereal is for old ladies and poor people. I love the great prize inside. Can you deal with the amazing milk liquid CPU cooling system? I love cereal. <laughs> love the great taste. Moms love the 12 essential vitamins and minerals. And with milk, your kids will get 100% of their daily dose of calcium. My teeth are bleeding! Frank and Prairie cereal is part of this balanced breakfast. <laughs> uh, fun fact, those were Chris Gore's kids. <laughs> True. Startling fact, Chris Gore has kids. <laughs> That is so startling. <laughs> Still ahead, Matt Meyer rates the super fast HTC One X smartphone and gadget prize. I'm gonna be here for that. I know. Great. What are you doing it with them? little unrehearsed audience participation. Right. Today's gadget prawn is so appealing. How appealing is it? Oh, pretty good. So appealing, it was stolen off Matt Myra's desk. Aww. Throw out the
not those boring old smartphones. This is the new HTC One X. It has a 4.7 inch Super LCD screen with a 720p resolution. Fly through apps with a dual core Snapdragon processor and one gig of RAM. It can also snap some high res photos with its eight megapixel camera. This new smartphone can be yours for $199 with a contract. Welcome back, Matt Myra! Hey! So HTC is looking to reboot their phone line with the One Series. We're finally looking at the HTC One X. Uh, we were going to review it last week. We sure until, were. Until, again, it was stolen oh. right off Matt's desk. Prime suspect, secret. Yep. Oh. <laughs> this one's out. What so this is it. This is the HTC One. We've been waiting a little while to get our hands on this, and here it is. It's a great design. Mm -hmm. Also, thanks HTC for sending us another one yeah. and being understanding yeah. of that. Uh, we were really finally uh, starting to see different looking phones, mm -hmm. not like a black slab of plastic like Samsung is known to do. The body is a matte finish, which actually feels very good in your hand. Mm -hmm. It looks Pretty great in our cleaning crew's hands as it well. It does. <laughs> Seacrest is cleaning. Allegedly. Uh, pretty much the same size and specs as the Galaxy <laughs> Nexus, which is still at my desk. Uh, you have a power <laughs> button on top, volume rocker on the side. Uh, the rest of the buttons on here are capacitive. Mm -hmm. The rear camera sticks out Look in this little, it's like a camera nipple. Okay. It That's is. It. You don't have to. <laughs> Look it, it is. You tell me it's not. No, there it you go. It definitely is, yeah. There you go. It's chill, it. chilly in here. I'm just checking it for smudges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is great. It does. It, it does feel like a lot of work went into making this phone. Aesthetically look very, very pleasing. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Out. Well, the One X has a 4.7 inch super LCD display ah. with a 1280 by 720 resolution. That was a lot of numbers. Right. It was. Some of those numbers were very big. Yes. What does that mean? How does it look? It means that this screen is really awesome. Uh, it's this, it's top notch. This is probably the best smartphone screen I have seen yet. And I have seen the Retina display. You hear that, Apple? What? Yeah. This is so big. It's 4.7 inches. Pixel density is on par with the Retina display. 313 pixels per inch. Color reproduction is excellent. Still have Allison Hayslip on the website yep. there. I don't know. <laughs> Not sure what's going on, uh, but they'll get that. That's weird. Our website's just for video game reviews. Why is she even on there? I don't get that. What's a G4? <laughs> uh, the Super Jokes L3, for three. <laughs> featuring Matt and Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> super LCD screen is definitely superior to a lot of the Super AMOLED screens we're seeing lately. Okay, the yeah. phone also packs a lot of power. This yep. is this is the the real deal here. Dual core Snapdragon processor. Of course, the latest version of Android, which is Ice Cream Sandwich, it so it is. can actually take advantage of those processors. Yeah. And we always talk whenever we show off any Android phone, we always get two seconds into it, and it's like, right. well. It doesn't have the latest version. It doesn't have Ice Cream Sandwich. It's coming soon, we swear. It really makes a huge difference it does. when a device has it on it. Absolutely. And this comes out of the box with Ice Cream Sandwich on it. Uh, it's very fast in no small part thanks to that Ice Cream Sandwich. There's little to no Android lag in here. Again, there is a little bit of Android sure. lag because there always will be for some reason. Uh, this is it. Speed test against the Droid Razor Max. Looks pretty HTC similar. HTC One, it looks, looks the same, right? And then boom! What? Whoa! What? We got to space like a second quicker. I know. There's different physics in the game, Kevin. Crazy. So much gravity. Uh, <laughs> this is running HTC's latest skin, which is Sense 4.0. Uh, it's, it's one of the few things I didn't really like about the phone. It's pretty much the old version of Sense with some improvements like uh, home screen customization, app switcher. I just prefer stock Android. Yeah, Android's you know? not broke, and they keep trying to fix it yeah, and don't. add on widgets. But I I'm actually okay with that as long as they make it one touch to uninstall or remove it, and it's not that easy to get rid of. Yeah, it is a lot like when you get bloatware on your computer. Yeah. It's just a pain in the butt to find and get rid of, and you really can't on this unless you know what you're doing. Go for it. Uh, even then, the uh, OS, it felt pretty snappy. Even with Sense on it, it felt good. good. It was a good, good OS. All right, well, like many phones, this thing snaps photos. Yep. Uh, we mentioned the camera nipple on the back. It's pretty sizable. That's a sizable protrusion. Uh, eight megapixels. Hey, <laughs> chilly in the studio today. Um, how was the camera? Because I imagine there's some crazy optics packed in there. Yeah, you, you, I thought, listen, I thought the camera was going to be fantastic. When I took it out uh -oh. of the box, I'm like, hey, eight megapixels, this thing's going to be great. But it isn't. It's okay. It's not as good as I'd like. On paper, sounds good. Eight megapixels, yeah. 1080p Again, video. Again, these are all good things. Right? What's, what's wrong? It's not, it's not. I don't know exactly what's wrong. I don't know if it's the optics or the smartphone uh, software, the software on here. The software itself, yeah. But it's a little 
crappy. It's a little crappy. Not a lot okay. crappy. That's pretty blown out, right? I, I, I didn't enjoy the way that that dealt with sunlight. You also hate flowers in general. You oh, hate they are jerks. <laughs> Turtles weren't even cooperating today, so oh I had to God. go take Such pictures of inanimate divas. objects. Such jerks. divas. Uh, I don't think many people would be disappointed. What, go, what do you want to I was going to say, if we could go back to that photo, yeah, because that, that's really <laughs> telling, because it is... That's... That's <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, it's telling about your personal hobbies and fetishes outside of the studio, the way you that's, position that's, your Jesus dolls just say, and action that's, figures. That's Adam Jenkins' desk. Okay. <laughs> it's not my desk. Also says a lot you're hanging out in his desk. Jesus is totally going to make out with that dude, But it, the white balance was wrong. The there white was balance was off. Out, yeah. And that could be a software thing. That, yeah. That really could be. Uh, it does, yeah. It will, uh, you'll get different white balance filters on here. You can play with a little bit of the camera settings mm -hmm. to get some different looks. I don't think many people will be disappointed by the pictures this produces, but it's just not on par with, like, the iPhone 4S's camera yeah. or the Galaxy Nexus's camera. 1080p video looked pretty good, but again, it's not on par with the elite smartphones. Right. That is the magic outside of the studio. That is a fountain, oh, everybody. Lots of pennies and wishes in there. Oh, they so many wishes. True. They haven't yet. They never do. <laughs> um, how is the battery life, though? Because I know it's, it's LTE. It's yeah. got a huge screen. Yeah. Is it draining by you know, noon? It does a lot, but the battery is actually pretty good. You got a, I got a full day of heavy use out of this. It doesn't have the best battery life, but again, that's because the screen is drawing a lot of power. Uh, the screen's amazing, though, so it's a nice compromise. We tested it with the, the AT&T 4G LTE model, mm -hmm. which actually has a bigger battery to compensate. Nice. Uh, so you don't have to buy a separate larger no, capacity you don't, battery? Which I thought was nice, because I haven't really seen that before with two models with two different batteries, sure. other than the Droid Razor and the Droid Razor Max, but those are two different phones, Right. Well, it, it sounds like it's hitting on all, it's checking a lot of boxes, it is. except for maybe the camera department. Yeah. So here's the thing, you can get the HTC One X for free from Matt's desk, yeah. <laughs> or for $1.99 with a contract as yeah. such. What is the verdict, Matt? We're giving it four out of five. Four out of five, everybody. I was very impressed by the design of the phone. I think it looks great, feels great. The screen is excellent. One of the best I've seen. Ice cream sandwich makes the phone fast and a pleasant experience to use, but HTC's skin and the camera are sort of holding this back from five out of five. So if totally you're on AT&T, you want a good Android phone, this is one to consider, definitely. Right. Thank you, Matt Myra. Really appreciate thank it. And you, thank you, Dad. HTC, for thank you, HTC. Us another one. Thank you so much. That is it for today's Gadgetron. If you have a gadget you'd like to see us rate, email us at gadgetron at g4tv.com. And now, over to Candace. Gracias, senor. Still ahead, the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants is here live. Me, comedian Tom Kenny, next. of SpongeBob SquarePants and every other thing you have ever heard. Tom Kenny is here, everybody. Yeah! Wow. What a crowd. You're your own best hype man. Man, too. that, that free it. liquor is paying off. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. It's not free. We take it out of their, oh, their paychecks. Oh, good. Well, yeah. I know she gave me a 10% discount, yeah, uh, so that was good. You're very welcome. We're, we want to be BevMo for our guests, essentially. <laughs> we want to enable any bad habits they have. The, the, the five-cent Thunderbird sale. <laughs> yeah, I love it. You're, um, here's the thing. I, I, like, if, if someone is a mechanic, Right, and they go to a, they go out. They have friends. They go to a social setting, maybe once a week. Let's say twice a week. Someone will say, "Hey, I got this thing with my car. The brakes are a little squeaky, or I don't know if it's a radiator or a terminator. There's something wrong with my car. I don't know what it is." When people know who you are, it must be relentless. The onslaught oh, okay. of do this voice. Can you do this? Here's my voicemail. My kid's birthday's coming up. You I see where you're going. Yeah, it's time. like being a doctor and people come up to you at a party and go, does that feel like a tumor to you? Right, can yeah. You yeah. Can you look at this? What is it? Should it be itchy? <laughs> oh, can, my God. can you scratch it? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's strange. Like, I think I've been on more answering machines and voicemails <laughs> than, the de than the default voice that's on those exactly. things. You know what I mean? The number you have reached. Uh, yeah, everybody wants a, wants a SpongeBob point, message or an Ice King message or a Dr. Octopus message or something for their for their kids. So. At what point do you snap though and just go like, no, no, Never. I will not do it. Never. Never, because it means I'm still employed. Right. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, you got to understand, I have like that carny folk mentality, and all my all, all my fellow uh, voiceover actors, Billy West and all these guys, we talk about this all the time. You have that mindset of somebody who grew up in the Depression, yeah, the last Depression, not this one, and <laughs> and you're you just are so convinced that it's all going to end and that somebody's going to catch you and make you work in a cubicle as an insurance actuarial right. that you just you just do everything and you're glad to have it and it's fun and you know it's the same to a large degree handful of of people or group mm -hmm. of people that do the majority of the voiceovers 
So, you know, you're seeing the same people no matter whether you're doing like a preschool show or or an adult swim show or a Nickelodeon show mm -hmm. or, or Cartoon Network show. A lot of times it's the same core people on, on a lot of those shows. So it's, right. it's old home week. So, so with that said, can you, can you give us a little little taste? Maybe little, <laughs> little. Oh, oh, sorry, I, I, am in, I, I am legally enjoying from doing SpongeBob. Nickelodeon won't let me do it. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes! 12 years. So 12 good. years. I know, I, I can't believe Did you, that, that train is still rolling. I, <laughs> I can't believe it. Ah! <laughs> and then they give you money. It's like insanity. <laughs> and doing uh, that, and that's the cartoon is just one type of work, right? Because then there's video games, and then there's commercials, and those are all very different. That's true. Different, it's a, it's, it's uh, a weird, abilities. it's a weird job, like a multiple personality disorder for profit that that you that you have. <laughs> where you, any other career, someone would be giving you uh, medicine to remedy exactly. The yeah, issue. In, in an earlier uh, in an earlier age, I, you know, I, I would have had a stake driven through my heart as a witch. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, he's, he's speaking in tongues. Right. But, now you uh, voice the witch. Now, now you, I am yeah. the witch. It, it's. Uh, uh, what was the question? Uh, the question is, they're, they're all they're all very different types of work. So like, yeah. uh, so from cartoon to like video game per se. Like, they're is very it one that you enjoy you know? more, or is one well, more I love cartoons. I grew up wanting to be Mel Blanc. He was my Babe Ruth. Sure. You know, he was the guy that I, I wanted to be. So, cartoons are the most fun. You have, you know, most of the time the whole cast is around. So you're doing it like an old time radio show, or the way those old cartoons like Bullwinkle and. And all those used to be so. You know, Patrick is there, and Squidward sure. is there, and, and you know they're all there. And you get to riff as a character. Yeah, with and these the same guys, with Adventure Time. You know, Jake guys, and, yeah. and John DiMaggio, that, that, that's Jake the dog, and Jeremy Shada, that's that's Finn the human, are are all there, and and you're working off of people and having fun. The the video game thing is a little bit more clinical, but it's it's fun in its own kind of Sudoku Rubik's Cube kind of a way. Like it's more about obviously you're surfacing story with video games and, and performance, but you're also covering every single action that the player or the character might take. So right. it's like a giant checklist of, Duh! now you die this way, now you die that way. Right. Now, now, it's a, now, now your head's getting a, cut yeah, off. A now thin wooden hand, club, yeah. giant wooden club. Exactly. Now it's an orc with a club. Now it's a knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird way to make a living. You must have, uh, it, well, it's funny that it sounds like there's work that goes into it, yet when I interview certain celebrities and whatnot, <laughs> it's like, uh, so you did the voice of, uh, you were the voice of an animated donkey. And it's like, yeah, I, I went into the booth, I wore my cargo shorts, I had a cigar and uh, my tie, and I got millions of dollars after. It was great. You know, sometimes I wonder what it must be like to be a celebrity and just have to do your own voice. Like, right. I don't know what that's like. Like, this is the only, this is the first time I've done my own voice in months. <laughs> and I hate it. I hate it. It'll be the last. Yeah, too, exactly. Tom, what a horrible, what a horrible voice to be saddled with. But uh, I love the, uh, the, you know, that, that hubris of those celebrities that, that, that go, oh, it was great. I was in and out. And then, and then I made a million dollars, right. you know. And uh, that, Chris Rock actually said that on the, uh, on the Oscars, by the way. Right, when he won an award <laughs> for doing what to do. Million. And I'm going, damn, are you kidding me? <laughs> it's like, wow, do a ride along with me, Rock. I challenge you, Chris Rock. Uh, <laughs> come on. Yeah, yeah, it's a throwdown. It's like the WWF. That's a, <laughs> he, does, he doesn't watch, would, I'm sorry. Wouldn't make it through the day. Wouldn't um, make it through the day. With, with regard to, like, when you see a character on a page, do you go, okay, I have this, I have a little satchel of voices that I do, <laughs> and I'm going to reach in, and I'm going to take this and tweak it, or do you try to come up with a voice specifically for that character? Good question. Yeah, but like my, my threadbare little case of, of women's underwear samples that yeah, I go like door to door, <laughs> like selling, like with Willie Loman. Here's the go-to. Uh, well, I can give you a little nasal, but I'm going to close the throat a little death bit. Death of a voice salesman. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it is like that. It's, it's kind of like a right brain, left brain both, you know, you, you, mm -hmm. it's generally. Uh, I imagine it's rock'em sock'em robots in yeah. there, <laughs> very cartoony, yeah. and they just fight until a voice comes out. Yeah, yeah, your your, your chin goes up like yeah. that. It's, uh, you know, you're looking at the picture, you're reading the personality description. Sometimes they tell you, you know, we're thinking of maybe a mashup of this celebrity and that celebrity. Sure. And you, sometimes you, just, you get he lives in a pineapple. Sometimes under you the get sea. that. He's a man child <laughs> who lives in a pineapple. He's not quite a, a, a adult. He's not quite a kid. Uh, you know, think Pee Wee Herman meets a munchkin meets, you know, and, and, and it comes out sounding like SpongeBob. But really, it's just about making your best guess, you know, throwing stuff sure. against the wall. And, you know, I always say you, you either want to be, you either want to be the thing that makes them go, exactly, that's what we were hearing in our heads, you know, but we couldn't, you know, explain it. Sure. Or you want them to go, wow, that is so not even close to what we were hearing, but it's interesting.
Right. And then they'll go either. They'll now they'll get out go, of our sound booth now, and don't ever call yeah, us again. Now, now try that. Yeah, now we're going to call Chris Rock and say, hey, can you do what this guy just did? <laughs> yeah, for a million dollars. Yeah, use it as a template. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Chris, I love you. I love you, Chris. Um, <laughs> now, in addition to doing the voice stuff, uh, I, I did not know that you were in one of my, fa my favorite Smashing Pumpkins videos. Oh, yes. You're in the Tonight Tonight video. Wow, you guys dug deep into the, uh, into the yeah, IMDb. Yeah, well, we're, we're voice chasers. Cool, yes. We've been known. That's that, what, uh, which is also a thing that, I learned. There's like voiceover whole... groupies that will track down. The voices that they hear. And things, yeah, right? there's people. That, I guess they call themselves voice chasers. It's all like I think I heard Tom Kenny on a Best Buy commercial. You know, and they, you know, like even before it's on your IMDb, they're they're chasing it. They're like you know, like people that chase. Uh, 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 Hurricanes and stuff around. Like an accident like attorney chasing a bus. <laughs> yes, that's what exactly. I imagine. Have you been in an accident? <laughs> Do you know anyone who's been in an accident? So yeah, we, we did that. Uh, that was that kind of came off of Mr. Show mm -hmm. with Bob and David, a series that my wife and I were on in H on HBO uh, back in the '90s. That's that's my wife in that clip, Smashing Pumpkins clip. Oh, I didn't. Did you guys meet on the video? No, no you met him. No, met we Mr. knew each show. other. We we met before Mr. Show. We were on Mr. Show, and then uh, the people that were directing some of the Mr. Show stuff were also doing this crazy George Melies, which everybody knows who that is now because of Hugo. Hugo, the, right? Uh, uh, you know, based video for for the Smashing Pumpkins. You know, and they said, you know, you got kind of a silent movie. Look with like you know big eyes and kind of a weird pale face. <laughs> so you know, do you thanks, want, Mister. Do you want Are you going to offer me a job, oh, or can we stop talking? That's how, that's how that would end. So so we wound up doing it, and all the effects were were practical. You know, like as if as it would have been in sure. you know 1918. So so those clouds are real, and the mermaids oh, are beautiful. real, and. And the, you know that guy's bouncing up and down on a trampoline. That's my my wife blowing people up with a uh, umbrella, and uh, <laughs> it, it was it was fun. So after we saw Hugo, I showed that to my kids who had never seen it, and I said, you know, now that you've seen that movie, look at this cool music video. And it was fun to watch their dawning realization that it was mom and dad. Right. Like we suddenly we suddenly got a million times cooler. I was gonna say, know? was that cool points then? Yeah, or were they like, it was total cool points. I love yeah, because you know, you you don't tell your your. You know, you don't you don't sit there and show your resume to your kid and like, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, sit down. We're gonna we're gonna look at more. We're gonna look at more of Daddy's stuff. You know, <laughs> come on, let's let's bathe in Daddy's greatness. Yeah, that's what we do every Saturday night. My greatness. <laughs> hey, you know what? This was so easy. You made it so easy. I felt like a pretender because I'm I have a very ambivalent relationship with technology. And I felt like a total poser pretender being here well, on this oh, show. Oh, are you kidding me? Not at all. Because no. I'm, I'm like, we're all fakers. I, 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 I don't like, even, I don't even use my Twitter. I got a team of people in Indonesia, dude, that tweeted out for me. I am so one chromosome cool away from Amish. <laughs> I've got like, I used a butter churn today. Um, well, listen. So thanks for making it easy. I, it, it's certainly my pleasure. Thank you for that. And uh, we will get you on Twitter. We, it is going to happen. Okay. It's going to happen during this commercial break. So wow. you'll, you'll, uh, first of all, thank you, Tom Kenny. I mean, yeah. really. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Check out his work on Adventure Time, Ultimate Spider Man, of course, SpongeBob SquarePants. But soon you'll be able to follow him on Twitter. I will tweet it out. We'll get you on. Cool. You, you have to be on. Yeah, there. You, you, really you have to give me the people that outsource my humorous tweets uh, to write, you know, to write we my humorous the, tweets for I'll me. I'll take a percentage of it. Okay, great. cool. All right, thank you, Tom. <laughs> now over to Candace Bailey. Uh, it is time to attack this stuff to sit on. Every drummer's nightmare. You're rocking too hard and the entire band gets thrown off beat. No! But thanks to British company Porter and Davies, you can feel the beat with a BC2. This traditional drummer's throne has an internally mounted tactile generator and is connected to an engine which turns the bass signal into a physical thump. The entire unit is very portable and easy to set up. Just plug in the throne and the mic to a power source and you are ready to rock. You'll have to shell out a pretty penny though, about 1300 bucks. But hey, you'll never get an ear full from your bassist again. Yay! Trying to get a game of soccer together but can't feel the full 11? No, well then just grab a buddy and the new lazy football chairs by Italian designer Emmanuel Magini. Combining the act of sitting and the beautiful game, Magini widened the front legs of a chair and attached a net mimicking a goal mouth. So unlike a full 90 minutes of running back and forth, the only skill required here is the ability to blog. That is my game of soccer right there. The design was recently shown off during the Milan Design Week and is not yet for sale, but hopefully soon, living room bragging rights will be taken beyond the game of FIFA 2012. Now, we all know everyone's deep, dark desire. What? To be the captain of their very own starship, yeah. right? Yeah. I know. Well, let the guys over at Think 
Geek indulge you with your very own inflatable captain's chair. This officially licensed Star Trek collectible is painted just like Kirk's throne with various lights and buttons like yellow or red alert and Jenison pod printed on the side. Plus it's inflatable, so goodbye office chair. <laughs> Wave to the haters while you go in the first seat for only 25 bucks. Engage. <laughs> Stay tuned. Attack checks out the heroes of the Paralympics up next. <laughs> Get out of that. All the news you need to know. It's Monday, May 14th, and here are your top Hello, by the way. Yay! Yay! An engineer has unveiled plans to boldly go where no man has gone before by actually building the Starship Enterprise. Yes! The ridiculously detailed plans from conceptual designs to specs and even a research and funding schedule describe a full-size ion-powered enterprise with a 1G onboard gravity mechanism. While the ship won't travel at warp speed, the engineer says it could reach the moon in three days and Mars in three, three months. Plus, the construction could be achieved by modern research and technology within the next 20 years. Just shut up, take my money. That's all I have to say. Now, sure, Kodak may have been on a path towards bankruptcy in recent years, but that never stopped them from having their very own nuclear reactor. Yes, it was just revealed that as recent as 2006, the film and photography Megacorp had a reactor filled with weapons-grade uranium in their facilities in Rochester, New York. Yes! I'm serious! For over 30 years, they had it stowed away in a closely guarded concrete bunker without having ever made a public announcement or alerting local authorities and only decided to have it dismantled after the national security concerns post 9-11. Now, the purpose for having a top secret nuclear reactor I don't know, likely some internal testing and cocktail party bragging rights? I don't know, I don't understand. Now chalk one up for the Russian space program because they just released an epic 121 megapixel photo of Mother Earth. This is really cool. The image is especially unique because unlike most high-res NASA photos, which are usually composites of multiple photographs, this image was taken in a single shot. On top of that, the Ruskies combined visible and infrared wavelengths of light to alter the colors so the vegetation, which is normally green, appears in Martha Stewart-approved rustic brown. So if you get a chance, find a computer with a fast internet connection and enjoy yourself with a nice, quiet afternoon mind explosion. That's really cool. Now finally, Diablo 3 is almost here. Listen up, what? because there's a few things you need to know before you get started trawling the depths of hell. I'm good, but sure. Okay, listen. Just listen up. Blizzard is allowing people to download the game ahead of time. Oh, you already know that. Got okay. Well, they don't. So if you go to Battle.net and start installing the game now, then it'll be ready to go when midnight rolls around. Now, are you worried that your computer can't support the game? Are you okay with that, Kev? Got a new machine just for it. Okay. But go ahead. Uh, this is for them, not me. <laughs> I'm not going to be selfish, Sarah. This is about the audience. I know. So this is not about me. So please be quiet. Yep. Let them hear what's going on. Uh, Blizzard's website has a comprehensive outline of system requirements, but they say if you have a machine that was made in the last few years, you should be good to go. Also, remember that a broadband connection is required, even if you're playing by yourself. So double check your internet machine to make sure your connection is up to speed. Although if you're still on 56K, then we need to have a talk, okay? Aww. I am Sarah Underwood. You have just been fed. And now back to Kevin and Kim. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> so now to meet one of the athletes who will be competing in this year's Paralympics. Jessica Chobot headed to Southern California to learn more. He's a four-time national road race cyclist champion, but today Sam Cavanaugh is going global in an international competition that could send him to the Paralympics. The story of Sam Cavanaugh is both tragic and inspirational. After surviving a horrific avalanche that resulted in the loss of his leg, he is now focused on cycling and teaching avalanche awareness. 
Sam is also charging forward with the goal of competing in the 2012 Paralympics in London. This is his story. Blake Morse, Dad. Yeah, buddy. Woo! So tell me a little bit about the accident. January 1st, 2005, I was in the backcountry of on the Montana-Idaho border, about 25 miles from the nearest road. And uh, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, while climbing mountains and skiing with my friends, I was hit by an avalanche. And it uh, ended up taking the taking the life of one of my best friends and ultimately um, due to complications of getting caught and hit by a tree and shattering my lower leg, I had to have my leg amputated. Sam was fortunate enough to end up on top of the massive snowdrift after the avalanche subsided. Unfortunately, his friend Blake was not so lucky. They rolled him out, I waited for Blake to stand up, and then I watched as they conducted CPR for about 20 minutes. And then I remember um, just in this like wave of emotion, seeing three guys stand up and call it. And then I looked down and I was like, oh, my leg is jacked. And then I could look up slope and I could see the trail of blood from where I had slid. It would take another two days for Sam and his friends to reach the nearest road, which was 25 miles away. Did you not sleep at all then for two days just for fear of closing your eyes? Yes. I remember laying on the slope, Matt had climbed up to me and he simply said, Sam, you're going back to Sarah. In a way, it's almost as if like my eyes staying open was me just staring at my wife and just saying, I'm gonna get there. I, I was uh, totally in shock. I thought that our friend was playing a joke that um, maybe they just were gonna be late that night. But uh, once he said that our friend Blake had passed away, I knew it was way more serious. And I think just feeling overwhelmed with emotion, just not knowing if Sam was going to live or not, and just, just feeling pretty freaked out. Sam's left leg was amputated just below the knee in a three hour long surgery. However, the complications associated to the amputation required nearly a dozen additional surgeries. I was actually kind of introduced or made aware of the Paralympics when I was in the hospital. When I was in a particularly deep, uh, kind of dark spot, Sarah actually busied herself getting my bike stuff together. And I remember she was pulling out my old trainer that I used to train on. And then she came out of our bedroom, I remember, and she had a pair of my riding shorts and one shoe. And she said, you're gonna ride your bike today. And I started pushing, I was like, I wanna meet my process. I wanna get this leg. I wanna figure out how we're gonna do it. You're about to go into this race. First thing that's in your mind. Win. When you're going against the world's best, we all train hard and have poured a lot of months into getting here and being in our top condition, top fitness. And so the competitor in me always goes out to win. You know, your average road bike's gonna have typically around 20 speeds. What is the most striking of this bike first off is there's no gear shifters. It also doesn't coast. And it doesn't have brakes either, right? Yeah, that's the next thing that jumps out typically. Yeah. This bike has no brakes. Anytime you start getting into serious cycling, you're gonna go to a clipless system. They are specifically designed for a clean system, much like almost a downhill ski boot would be. Uh -huh. And this actually goes in. It's stuck. I can pull mm -hmm. up and generate power by pulling up on my leg. I'm an I'm a entirely different athlete. Uh, far more trained, far more regimented, and far, far faster. With his family cheering him on, Sam got off to a great start, giving it his all as he set a personal best lap time. However, his strategy to go all out in the earlier laps may have led him to exerting too much energy and was unable to keep that speed up throughout the time trial. So tell me how you did out there. <laughs> there was a pretty wide open door to go out there and uh, find myself in that gold round, but it's hard to say if the legs didn't come around or what it was, but for one reason or other, we went slow. You know, I had my wife here for the first time. I wouldn't be down here um, and capable of riding my bike against the world's best without her. That means the world to me. Even though Sam isn't leaving this particular event with the medal, he still has a chance to qualify for the London Paralympics at the Road Nationals in June. You can't keep a good man down.
Comics features clothes inspired by Marvel Comics and Star Wars. I hope that includes shredded purple pants. You know, the Hulk. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shredded? Purple pants. The feed is brought to you by the General Automobile Insurance Services. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the General and save some time. Everybody's wanted to be a DJ at one point or another. Now you can feel a little bit closer to that dream with the music creation app Figure. Made by the same people behind music production powerhouse Reason, Figure empowers users with the ability to quickly and easily mix music on the fly. Get started by tapping or sliding your finger on the performance box to add drum beats, a bass line, and some lead melodies. Once you find a sound you like, lock it in by tapping record. Rotate the wheels at the top to make changes to the pattern, allowing you to modify everything from the number of snare hits to the rhythm of the bass. Use tweaks to take customization even further by adjusting the sound of individual instruments. You can even change the overall tempo and tone of your mix in the song tab. Who knows when musical inspiration might strike? Now you'll always be prepared with figure for only 99 cents on the iPhone. But please don't forget us once you've made it to the big time. We can't wait for summer to start. Well, with all the movie premieres and, of course, Comic-Con. So to help outfit ourselves for all the awesome, we are rounding up these latest threads. Want to make your business casual a bit more super? Mighty Fine has always had a huge variety of tees, but now they've got you covered with their new line of Marvel polos. You can keep it sleek and simple with the classic X-Men crest and Avengers logo. Or you can go a bit bolder with Captain America's shield or the fiery phoenix on your chest. But our personal faves are the sleek Spider-Man and Deadpool designs. So add some super-powered flair to your polos for only $28 over at WeLoveFine.com. Now if you're looking for more of an indie vibe, you want to check out the tees over at Design by Humans. The website holds daily competitions for artists where the winning designs get produced and sold through the site, with the artists getting a cut if enough shirts sell. These guys have some seriously cool monsters. With baddies like the Looming Threat and this multi-creature beastie, they're one Three Wolf Moon away from becoming a classic. Plus, look at these awesome pop art graphics like this tough Astro Primate or pissed off Neon Dino. And we're totally fans of this unicorn chomping lion and camera headed big brother. So head over to designbyhumans.com to get your vote in and pick up a tee for between 9 and 25 bones. Finally, have you ever wished the Sith had just a little more personality? Well, it's your lucky day because Ingram Clothing has a unique take on the dark side. From a business class stormtrooper to this simple shot of Vader on a bike, these shirts would make any Jedi jealous. And if you're looking to get in touch with your inner child, this shirt of a young girl and her pet ad ad might be up your alley. But if that's too much Star Wars for you, check out this slick samurai owl and sweet supernatural invasion of Paris. For 23 bucks each, the lighter side of the dark side can be found over at the Ingram Clothing Etsy page. So whether you're a superhero or Jedi at heart, or a graphic design junkie, don't worry, these threads have got your back. Hey. Thanks, Fabric. Yeah. I also want to thank our guests, if I may. Of course, Matt Myra, always phenomenal. Love him. And then, you know, when I call in sick tomorrow because of Diablo, maybe Matt can fill in for me. Yeah. That's all right? I he would. <laughs> also, Perfect. thanks to Tom Kenny, who is an amazing talent and a great guy. So great. Do you want to thank anybody? I think you should thank, thank two I'll people. You only get two. Two people. Sarah Underwood. Okay, that's one. You only have one left. That was pretty good. I'm going to get an extra thanks for you. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm going to take an extra thanks for you.